Not only the atheists, but the Muslims say to this question too. That what was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing before creation? In order to bring yourself in a positive conclusion, first you should know about the concept of time. That what is the nature of time? In a common sense, we think that time is the same for all. But science says that time is relative, meaning that it differs from one person to another. What Einstein gave us is a much, much richer picture where everybody has their own private time which runs at a, their own private rate. There isn't time in the sense of a universal tick-tock. There were times. According to Einstein's theory of relativity, there's a relation between time and space. And that guy over there would say that I'm not moving at all, but I am. I may not be moving through space, but I am moving through time. I mean, after all, my watch just keeps on ticking and ticking. And as long as I'm standing still, that is, not moving through space, Einstein said that all of my motion is through time. But look what happens if I walk toward that guy. We've exaggerated it, but because I'm now in motion, he'll perceive my watch ticking slower. That's because, from his perspective, some of my previous motion through time is being diverted into my motion through space. And it's not just my watch. If we really exaggerate the effect, he'd perceive all my movement, my voice, everything about me, slowing down. And now that I've stopped moving, the passage of time in our watch is once again agrees. This was Einstein's key insight that motion through space affects the passage of time. For better understanding of the theory, I want to give an example. Suppose that I walk from one place to another and it will take one hour for me to reach the destination. But what if I ride towards the destination by a bike? Let's say it will take 30 minutes. As much as my speed is faster, time passes slower for me. Now suppose that I travel by an airplane at a constant speed. It may take 20 seconds. But if I travel by a speed of light, which is the fastest speed in the nature, then it would take me a millionth of a second. Therefore, if the speed is ultimate speed, then for sure time would be zero. So, such a speed is belonging to no one and nothing except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chooses the word asra, means the swiftest, not swift or swifter, but the swiftest. So for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, time is zero, because He is the absolute in speed. It means time is not passing for him. Or in other words, time is the creator of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is impossible for the creator to be bounded by his creator. It is we who feel the passage of time because we are bounded by time. So the words before, now or after are all concerned with time. And when there is no passage of time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then there is no before or after for him. That's why we cannot say what was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doing before creation. Remember, it is we that feel the passage of time as a flowing river towards the future. And that is why we have no access to our past and any knowledge of the future. In our day-to-day -day lives, we experience time as a continuous flow. 
but it can also be useful to think of time as a series of snapshots or moments. And everything that happens can be thought of as the unfolding of moment after moment after moment. And if we picture all moments or snapshots lined up, every moment here on Earth, every moment of Earth orbiting the sun, and every moment throughout the entire universe, we would see every event that has ever happened or will ever happen. Every location in space and each and every moment in time. From the birth of our universe at the Big Bang some 14 billion years ago, to the formation of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, to the creation of Earth four and a half billion years ago, to the time of the dinosaurs, to events happening on Earth today, like me working in my office. Thinking about space-time like this led Einstein to overturn our everyday picture of past, present, and future. You can see that everything is on its own place. The past is not gone and the future is already there. Not for us, but for our Creator, because time for Him is stopped. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows our future and everything from the past is recorded by Him. Some people may ask, if there is no passage of time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then why he mentioned in many verses that I have created the heavens and the earth in six days, or any other questions like this. It is mentioned only for us to have a measure of accounting for time. For example, in Surah Al-Fusilat, it is stated about the creation of the earth in two days. But in Surah Al-A'raf, it is stated about the creation of the whole universe in six days. By comparing these two verses, we can easily know that the earth is three times younger than the whole universe because six divided by two equals three. And this is what the latest discoveries talks about. The latest discoveries are telling us that the whole universe has begun to exist 13.5 billion years ago and the earth is created 4.5 billion years ago. 13.5 divided by 4.5 equals three. Today's science is also telling us that the earth is three times younger than the whole universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best.